In this article, you will read the evolution of industries and phases of industrialization in India for UPSC IOS. Industry The industry is a category of active enterprises and organizations which produce or sell products, services, or sources of revenue. Industry means not a factory, it refers to economic activities that are connected to the production of goods, extraction of minerals, and providing services. Industries are commonly categorized in economics as the primary industry, secondary industry, and tertiary industry. Manufacturing Manufacturing means the transformation of natural material endowments into commodities of utility by processing, assembling, and repairing. Manufacturing acts as the engine of economic growth. Evolution of Industries Industrial development is important for socio-economic and human development of a country. From the times before independence India has been traditionally renowned for cottage and household industries like muslin of Dhaka, chintos of Masulipnam, calicos of Cochin, silk goods, artistic pottery and ruminants of ancient architectural work for a Mahroli iron pillar. The cotton textile, silk textile, pottery, bronze, brass, silver, copper works, dyeing and calico printing of India was famous throughout the world. Before the beginning of modern industrial development, Indian pottery, muslin and silk goods were much in demand. Traditional handicrafts industry, however, suffered after the advent of the British in India. Arrival of English as tradesmen and subsequent industrial revolution resulted in the adoption of policy of raw material export from colonies and finished material import which led to the downfall of Indian cottage industries. This critical scenario improved somewhat after the mid-19th century but the growth of industries was a slow process. In India, the modern industrial sector on Blishment of the cotton textile industry in Bombay in 1851 with predominantly Indian capital and enterprise. In 1855, the jute industry was started in the Hooghly Valley at Rishra near Kolkata, largely with foreign capital and enterprise. Rail transport made a beginning between Bombay and Thane in 1855. The country's first paper mill was started at Balyaganj near Kolkata in 1870 and steel was first manufactured by modern methods at Kulti in 1874. The Tata Iron and Steel Company started at Jamshedpur in 1900. This means that the modern industrial sector had its beginning only after the middle of the 19th century. The two world wars gave an impetus to the development of a number of industries such as chemical, iron and steel, sugar, cement, glass, and other consumer goods industries. The post-independence industrial policy emphasized the attainment of the socio-economic objectives such as employment generation, higher productivity, removal of regional imbalances in development, providing strength to agricultural base, promotion of export-oriented industries, and consumer pro protection. A deliberate policy of locating the industries in economically backward regions has been pursued to reduce regional imbalances in development. The industrial policies of 1948 and 1956 indicate the direction of industrial development in India. The process of industrialization started with the launching of the first five-year plan and continued through successive plan periods. Phases of Industrialization, Evolution of Industries in India Indian industrialization i. Evolution of industries can be classified into five following phases. Phase I, Abortive Phase, 1818-1854 In this phase many attempts were made to initiate industrialization but were failed. Some of the in industrial set-up during this period was Year Industry established 1818 Textile mill at Fort Gloucester, Kolkata 1827 Iron steel smelting at Chennai 1829 Textile mill at Ahmedabad. 1832. Paper and pulp industry in Chennai and Balliganj. All of the industries were failed and were shut down due to suppressive British industrial policies. The private industries were not encouraged as a result of suppressive British ind industrial policies. Phase 2, Incipient Phase, 1854-1907. This was the phase of early expansion. The modern industry marked its presence by the establishment of the following industries at Year Industry 1854 Cotton Textile Mill at Mumbai by Karsonji Devarji, who was the first private entrepreneur of India. 1855 Jute Textile Mill at Rishra. Export of jute to Australia started. 1863 Ahmedabad Cotton Mills were established, it expanded due to the American Civil War. 1870 Woolen Textile Mills at Bangalore, Dharival, and Kanpur. 1875 more than 50 textile mills were set up. 1907 Close to 120 mills were established of which Chialis were in Bombay alone. Thus Bombay became cotton police of India. Other industrial developments which were witnessed in this phase were The first paper mill at Kolkata in 1870 
बिगिनिंग ऑफ फर्स्ट रेल रेलवे सर्विसेज फ्रॉम थाने टू मुंबई इन एक बंगाल आयरन वर्क स्टार्टेड एट कुल्टी इन एक मेजर ऑम्फसिस वॉज गिवन टू द पेपर एंड पल्प इंडस्ट्री एंड जूट टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्री इन हुगली एंड बिहार रीजन द कॉटन टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्रीज वर ऑम्फसाइज इन वेस्टर्न रीजन ऑफ इंडिया दस दिस फेज वॉज सक्सेसफुल इन सर्टिंग अप दर्न रोबस्ट एग्रो बेस्ट इंडस्ट्रियल सर्ट अप इन इंडिया बट बेसिक एंड हेवी इंडस्ट्रीज वर स्टिल लैगिंग फेज थ्री प्रीमच्यूर फेज उन्नीस सौ सात टू उन्नीस सौ पचपन दिस वॉज द प्रीमच्यूर फेज वेयर इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन बेस्ट ऑन द आयरन स्टील इंडस्ट्री स्टार्टेड सम ऑफ द इंडस्ट्रीज वर्क यर इंडस्ट्री उन्नीस सौ सात द फर्स्ट आयरन एंड स्टील इंडस्ट्री वॉज स्टार्टेड बाई जमशेदजी टाटा इन उन्नीस सौ बारह एट जमशेदपुर उन्नीस सौ उन्नीस किसको एट कुल्टी एंड हीरापुर उन्नीस सौ तेईस विश्वेश्वरीय स्टील प्लांट एट भद्रावती कर्नाटका इंटर वोर पीरियड ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर देयर वॉज राइज इन डिमांड ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल गुड्स फ्रॉम आर्म फोर्सेज इंडियन फिजिकल कमीशन सोट अप इन एक हजार नौ सौ इक्कीस से बाईस गेव प्रोटेक्शन टू इंडस्ट्रीज लाइक आयरन एंड स्टील टेक्सटाइल सीमेंट शुगर पेपर एंड मटल्स ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट ऑफ रॉ मटेरियल्स मेड प्रोडक्ट्स इन यूरोप वर कॉस्टली ड्यू टू हिंड्रेंसेस इन गुड्स वायासी विच लीड टू द फॉलोइंग ऑफ लिबरल पॉलिसी बाई ब्रिटिश टू वर्ड्स इंडियन मेड प्रोडक्ट्स ड्यूरिंग द वोट दिस पीरियड ऑल्सो सॉ द डिस्पर्शन ऑफ कॉटन टेक्सटाइल इंडस्ट्रीज अवे फ्रॉम मुंबई इंडिया अमर्ज एस द चार एथ लार्जेस्ट कॉटन मैनुफैक्चरिंग कंट्री इन द वर्ल्ड इंडिया बिकेम द मेन सप्लायर ऑफ लिकर एंड टेक्सटाइल ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू वाइल इंडियन इंडस्ट्री प्रॉस्पर्ड बिटवीन फर्स्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर एंड सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर द पार्टिसिपेशन ऑफ इंडिया इन सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर एंड कंट्री ऑफ जापान इन द वॉर क्रिएटेड प्रॉब्लम्स फॉर इंडियन इंडस्ट्रीज हाउ ओवर अब ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स वर शॉर्ट लिव्ड एंड इंडस्ट्रीज रिकवर्ड द मैनुफैक्चरिंग ऑफ आर्म्स एंड एम्यूनिशन टू मीट द वॉर टाइम रिक्वायरमेंट्स लीड टू द फ्लरिशिंग ऑफ इंडियन ऑर्डिनेंस इंडस्ट्रीज हवी केमिकल इंडस्ट्री स्टार्टेड इन उन्नीस सौ इकतालीस एंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एच दो सौ चार सिंथेटिक अमोनिया कॉस्टिक सोडा कोरिन एंड ब्लीचिंग पाउडर कमस्ट इन उन्नीस सौ बयालीस बैंगलोर एयरक्राफ्ट इंडस्ट्री स्टार्टेड मेटल फैब्रिकेटिंग इंडस्ट्री लाइक कॉपर वॉज इनिशिएटेड इंजीनियरिंग इंडस्ट्रीज लाइक इलेक्ट्रिक इक्विपमेंट्स एंड प्लास्टिक इंडस्ट्री फ्लरिश ड्यूरिंग दिस पीरियड पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू एंड पार्टीशन आफ्टर सेकंड वर्ल्ड वॉर देयर वॉज फॉल इन डिमांड फॉलोड बाय लेबर शॉर्टेजेस ओवरवर्क मशीनरी ट्रांसपोर्ट बॉटल नेक्स विच एडवर्सली अफेक्टेड द इंडस्ट्रियल ग्रोथ इन इंडिया पार्टीशन एडवर्सली अफेक्टेड कॉटन टेक्सटाइल एंड जूट इंडस्ट्री चालीस परसेंट ऑफ कॉटन एंड अस्सी परसेंट ऑफ जूट प्रोड्यूसिंग ट्रैक्स वन टू पाकिस्तान At the eve of independence, Indian industry was largely dominated by consumer goods of cotton, sugar, leather, etc. While the growth of intermediary nor capital goods was slow. Industrial Policy Resolution of 1948 changed the situation. The objectives of Industrial Policy Resolution of 1948 was: employment generation, high productivity, removal of regional imbalances, promotion of public sector, self sufficiency. Apart from above, Industrial Policy Resolution of 1948 had following features. It declared the Indian economy as mixed economy. Small-scale and cottage industries were given the importance. The government imposed restriction on foreign investments. It classified industries into four broad areas: strategic industries, public sector. It included three industries in which central government had monopoly. These included arms and ammunition, atomic energy, and rail transport. Basic key industries, public and private sector, six industries: with coal, iron and steel, aircraft manufacturing, shipbuilding, manufacture of telephone, telegraph and wireless apparatus, and mineral all were designated as key industries or basic industries. Important industries controlled private sector. It included 18 industries, including heavy chemicals, sugar, cotton, textile and woolen industry, cement, paper, salt, machine tools, fertilizer, rubber, air and sea transport, motor, tractor, electricity, etc. Other industries, private and cooperative sector. All other industries which were not included in the above mentioned three categories were left open for the private sector. One cent five year plan, one thousand nine hundred eighty one to fifty one, rolled out during this phase. The key features of the plan were: this plan promoted the idea of self-reliant closed economy and was developed by Professor P. C. Mahalanobis. In this plan, highest priority was given to the agriculture to achieve food self-sufficiency in the shortest possible time and control of inflation. Emphasis was given on increasing the capacity of existing industry than setting up the new ones. Some new industries emerged during this period, such as newsprint, power loom, medicine, paint, transport, and equipments. Some of the industries set up were Sindari Fertilizer Factory, Chitranjan Locomotives, Integral Coach Factory. Thus, during 1907 to 1955, some of the modern and basic industry took root in India, but looking at enormous population, it was miserably insufficient. Phase four, 1955 to 1985, early mature phase, and though only of YP. Do Andi plan is known as the Economic Constitution of India. 
It was inspired by the socialist pattern of Yosar. The Do and the 5-year plan functioned on the basis of Mahalanobis model. The Mahalanobis model was propounded by the famous Prasanta Chandra Mahalanobis in the year 1953. The salient features of Do and the year 5-year plan was Rapid industrialization with particular emphasis on the development of basic and heavy industries. Industrial policy of 1956 accepted the establishment of a socialistic pattern of society as the goal of economic policy. Backward area development and the trickle-down theory of growth coal center were adopted. Steel mills at Bhilai, USR, in 1951, Durgapur, UK, in 1959 and Raurkula, Germany, 1959 were established in second five-year plan. Many pre-existing steel plants such as Jamshedpur, Bunpur, Kulti, Bunpur and Bhadravati were expanded. HMT Bangalore, Sindhari Fertilizer and Chitranjan Locomotive Workshop were also expanded. Two more fertilizer plants at Raurkela and Nangal were set up. Third five-year plan, 1961-66 Udas Smiley The salient features of this plan were This plan emphasized on industrial diversification and expansion of existing industries like steel, machine, building, fuel, chemicals, etc. HMT plants at Bangalore, Haryana, Ajmer and Ranchi were started. Heavy electrical at Bhopal, drugs and pharmacy at Haridwar became new pillars of modern industry. Some of the problems during third five-year plan were The Indochina War 1962 and Indopak War 1965 Drought of 1965 Non-availability of foreign credit Inability of rigid administrative rules to cope with abnormal situations. Three annual plans, Ek Nau Chai Chai, Unhattar Udaas Smiley Plan Holiday. Failure of third plan that of the devaluation of rupee to boost exports along with inflationary recession led to postponement of fourth of YP. Three annual plans were introduced instead. Prevailing crisis in agriculture and serious food shortage necessitated the emphasis on agriculture during the annual plans. During these plans a whole new agricultural strategy was implemented. It involving widespread distribution of high yielding varieties of seeds, extensive use of fertilizers, exploitation of irrigation potential and soil conservation. During the annual plans, the economy absorbed the shocks generated during the third plan it paved the path for the planned growth ahead. Fourth five-year plan, 1969-1974 Udas Smiley Indian economy started recovering from recession at the beginning of fourth five-year year plan. Bokaro steel plant became operational. Ago best industry, small scale industry and household industry were greatly emphasized. Efforts were made to accentuate the process of industrial dispersal through regional and local planning process. Significant progress by industries like Allos and special steels, aluminum, automobile tire, petroleum refinery, electronic goods, machine tools, tractors and heavy electrical equipments were made. CSUs also showed the good progress. Fifth five year plan, 1974-79 Udas Smiley. During fifth five-year plan there was emphasis on rapid growth of core sector industries and increase the production of export-oriented articles and articles of mass production. There was rapid growth of steel plants. Steel plants at Salem, Vijangar, Vijangar and Vishakapatnam were proposed to create the additional capacity. Sale was constituted in 1973. Drug manufacturing, oil refining, chemical fertilizer and heavy engineering industry made good progress. World energy crisis during this period adversely affected the industries in India. Sixth five-year plan, 1980-85 Udas Smiley. This plan marked a watershed in industrial development process. Liberalization was initiated by Rajiv Gandhi. Optimum utilization of capacities was focused during this plan. The industrial productivity improved during this period. There was increase in output of consumer and capital goods. Electronics industry grew rapidly. Targets of capacity creation achieved for industries like aluminum, zinc, lead, petrochemicals, automobiles and consumer durables. Production targets achieved in industries like petroleum, machine tools, automobiles, etc. Phase V, 1985 to present mature phase. Seventh five-year plan, 1985-1990 Udas Smiley. Seventh five-year plan focused on high tech and electronics industrial service base. There was a general dispersion of industrial bases across all the regions. The local resources were exploited and there was a focus on the proper training for skilling the available human resources. With the seventh five-year plan integrated policy was framed to concentrate on industries with large domestic market and export potential. Macro changes in industrial policies started and some of the stringent and restrictive laws were modified allowing large private sector partnerships and FDIs. Annual plans 1990-91 and 1990-92.
Eight five year plan could not take off due to the fast changing political situation in the country, which led to the rolling out of annual plans of Ek Hazar Nasa Nabbe Se Ikyanve and Ek Hazar Nasa Ikyanve Se Banwe. The impact of liberalization was felt on industries along with other sectors of the economy. Eight five year plan, Unnis Sa Banwe Se Unnis Sa Satanwe. Unnis Sa Ikyanve was the watershed in the history of industrial development in India. New industrial policy under Rao Man Mohan model was adopted. Some of the major features of the new industrial policy was removal of country barriers of trade, reduction of areas reserved exclusively for the public sector, rationalization of approach towards monopolistic and restrictive practices, liberalization of foreign and import policies, removing regional imbalances and encouraging the growth of the employment-intensive small and tiny sectors. FERA was replaced by FEMA. New industrial policy led to the huge influx of foreign multinationals. New industrial policy accelerated the process of making the Indian industry internationally competitive. It was based on the process of deregulation, disinvestment, decentralization, the licensing and devolution, debureaucratization. Eight five year plan witnessed the growth. Any's automobiles and telecom industries. The industrial growth slowed in those shuni 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 ek due to the following factors: decrease in domestic demands, higher oil prices, Gujarat earthquake. high interest rate with adverse impact on private investment and slowdown in the whole country ninth five year plan 1997 se 2002 during ninth five year plan there was full current account convertibility of indian rupee capital account convertibility became partial and there was the complete transfer of fera to the fema re all economic sectors except three ways railway space and nuclear science were op opened for private investments Ninth five-year plan was successful in addressing the regional imbalance issues. Existing industries like cement, coal, steel, consumer goods, etc., were optimized. Tenth five-year plan, 2002 to 2007. Tenth five-year plan emphasized on modernization and technology upgradation. Tenth five-year plan led to the enhancement of export and an increase in the global competitiveness of Indian industries. There was a balance of regional development with the rollout of the tenth five-year plan. The tenth five-year plan saw the highest growth rate since independence. India emerged as a leader in IT and service sector. There was growth in the automobile and pharmacy sectors. To give major thrust in exports, Department of Commerce launched major initiatives like Asset Market Access Initiative (MAIS) and modernization of DO50. For balanced industrial development, industrial policy packages were announced for special category states of Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, North East. Kashmir North East for the textile industry tufts textile upgradation for textile scheme was launched textile center infrastructure development scheme was announced to take care of infrastructure development of textile industry in india there was an increase in the suffusion of it and the knowledge industry the tourism industry also got major boost 11th five year plan 2007 se 2012 11th five year plan was based in the concept of financial inclusion growth model which envisaged growth of industry and agriculture simultaneously with a futuristic vision There was a focus on industrial growth with environmental impact assessment. The exploitation of resources was further rationalized. The global crisis of 2008-09 adversely affected the growth trajectory of India during this plan.